I'm Pierce Alexander Lilholt, and if I know one thing, it's supply and demand. That's right, I know all about supply and demand. I'm the supply and demand man. And let me tell you, if I know one thing about supply and demand, it's that there's an inverse relationship between supply and demand. And what I mean by that is that if there's not a lot of something, then there's going to be more demand for that, assuming that there's any demand, then there is product. So let's take something that's scarce. Let's just say, for instance, lobster is scarce. And in most of the world it is the scarcity of that lobster is going to drive the price up. But in a place where it's abundant, like I remember hearing that in, I believe it was Maine or one of the northernmost states where they harvest lobsters, they were serving lobster in the prisons so often that lobster itself had to be, there had to be a law to prevent feeding prisoners lobster more than five times a week or whatever it was, some some amount. Where I very rarely have lobster here, it's not a it's not a common New Jersey food to have lobster. Now let's look at some of the factors that will affect the supply. Because the demand is going to be often created by advertising or, uh, or or a need for something. Innovation might drive that, but the supply itself is going to be driven a lot by, well, the price of materials. That's a big one. So the price of the materials or the labor, that will dramatically affect the supply. So if it costs a lot to make it, then there will be less of it. And the supply will also be affected by the price of other goods. So if there are a lot of competitors in that market, and if those competitors are setting a benchmark for pricing, you can only undercut those prices. You can't go and say, oh, Apple invented an iPhone and we want to make a smartphone, but we want to charge 10 times as much. Well, the market wouldn't bear that. Uh, another factor in the supply is the price it would be to produce it. So, um, so if, for instance, let's take the iPhone again, for example, they had streamlined all their processes, they got the cost down. Well, if I came in late, I didn't have all the knowledge to streamline, then my price of production might not even allow me to create a competitive product that would allow me to be profitable without charging way more than the competitors. So the price of other goods and the price of production, all of these are going to be tied together. Um, so is the state of technology. That's another big one for supply. So where are we in terms of technology? And a lot of this, if you look at computing power, is is it going to require more computing power than will be profitable? So a good example of supply and demand for this would be something like a cryptocurrency. So there is a demand for the cryptocurrencies, great deal of demand, but is the state of technology going to make it prohibitive for somebody to mine the Bitcoin. And by that, I mean, Bitcoins are mined using processing power. And 
if that processing power is is going to require more electricity than than the amount of bitcoins that are mined the state of technology would make it cost prohibitive for anybody to actually mine the bitcoins so the supply chain would essentially stop because people would lose money by creating the bitcoins and mining them because of their electrical costs but if if you waited a while and the processing speed got way more advanced and the energy costs went down then you would see people mining the Bitcoin again for instance if I went back in time and I took the computer that I have right now and I mined Bitcoin with it well I would be mining tons of Bitcoin with just a regular old computer I wouldn't need a supercomputer to do this whereas now you would need like a gaming console or a very advanced uh, computer just to mine even some basic Bitcoin so the state of technology is going to have a huge impact on supply at least today uh, taxes taxes are going to affect supply and all of these things are going to affect um, demand in the sense where cost affects demand but that doesn't necessarily change the demand for it it just is a prohibitive um, a lot of people won't fall into the demand curve because they won't actually move to purchase but if it was cheaper they would but taxes are going to be something that's out of the control of those who are in charge of production or labor um, if it's goods and services taxes can make supply non-viable so it could actually stop a supply chain as well because taxes could be prohibitive for for a product to be in a certain place or moved out of a certain place and the number one the number one factor in supply and demand at least in the corporate sense would be the goals and objectives of the company so all of these things are dependent upon is the company trying to satisfy shareholders is the company a 501 c3 nonprofit organization which really their only goal is then for the betterment of mankind or some sort of progress and in that case you would see a lot of the earnings be converted back into what would essentially be part of the supply and fulfilling the demand so if the goal of the company is only to fulfill the demand which you're seeing sometimes now with cell phones because the goal isn't to sell cell phones it's to sell the service or you see the same thing with a printer the goal isn't to sell the printer it's to sell the ink so the printer supply the printer supply is always going to be at least meeting the needs of the market and making sure that everybody within all the price ranges can get a printer or a cell phone it might not be the best one and that's where supply and demand comes into this there's going to be a demand curve and that's going to change depending on when people want to buy and when people want to um, enter the market for certain products there's always going to be uh, an innovator or a first adopter who's going to go and and say I want the first iPhone I don't care what it costs there's also going to be people who say I would like to wait and see if this is something that I need and it's expensive so I want to make sure this is something that is of value to me so when you look at supply and demand you really need to look it's an inverse relationship and there are external factors like for instance uh, subsidies to not grow a crop or just 
very odd things that are going to affect that. But one of the basic rules is there's an inverse relationship. So if it's something everybody needs, like let's just say it's water, and if there's only enough water for half of the people, well, then the price of that water is going to go up because there's less supply than the demand and therefore the price will go up and eventually there would be an equilibrium in that case people would just be dying off because they didn't get the water but usually the market will find an equilibrium where everybody who wants it will get it eventually <laughs> and then they might not want it anymore there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into that, but basically the number one thing to remember about supply and demand is that it's an inverse relationship and and hopefully you get what you need. And if you don't get what you need, then that's too bad. <laughs> that's just not good. Oh yeah.